Hi, I'm Patty. I'm a jewelry designer here at Fire Mountain Gems and Beads. Today's small intimate weddings are the way many people are choosing to celebrate new marriages. Partly because of the pandemic, but I think this new way of doing things is becoming the trend for many. We've all learned the value of close relationships in this time of so much isolation. And a smaller guest list is affording the new bride and groom the unique opportunity to spend more time with each individual person on that special day and to add more handmade love and custom touches. Which leads us to today's set of projects. I'll be teaching you how to create this set of simple, sweet, and meaningful do-it-yourself designs that you can use to enhance your wedding day place settings. This set includes a name card holder, wine charm, napkin ring, and embellished butter knife and placemat. So as you plan your intimate wedding, Fire Mountain Gems and Beads is here to help you make your special day unforgettable. Okay, let's go ahead and embellish the placemat. So I'm going to be using some E6000 Freylock, some crystal flatbacks, and a crystal katana to position them. This is a really easy, mess-free process anyone can do. You take the E6000, remove the cap, and you squeeze out just the very smallest bit. And I'm using kind of every other scallop in the placemat. So just the very smallest amount of the E6000. Let me get a few crystals out here. So you'll take the katana and just gently pick up the crystal and place it directly on the freylock. And then the other end of the katana, the little metal end, use that to push it down. Then grab another little dab of E6000. I'm doing every other scallop. I'll put a couple on here just to make it simpler. Just grab my katana, pick up a crystal, put it in place. And you just keep doing this all the way around the placemat. Really, really simple process. And it's a gorgeous look. It really gives something special to your placemat. You just keep going all the way around until it's complete. Okay, next let's make the name card holder. This is a really cute design. I'm going to go ahead and remove the name card so you can see what it looks like. And it's just um, a double loop, a double loop, a straight section, and then another double loop to make these infinities. And we leave the loop in a teardrop shape, and I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to start with my round nose pliers and some 20 gauge para wire. You could even use colored zebra wire, it would be really fun. I'm going to take my round nose pliers and at the base, the very base of them, I'm going to let the wire uh, trail out the back of the plier by a couple of millimeters. So I'm not making a perfect round where I'm putting the wire directly in the plier. I'm letting the tail come out a couple of millimeters. And that's going to give us that teardrop shape. So I'm just going to go all the way around the base of the plier. And you can see how we've started half of the small infinity there just like that. Then I'm going to put it on the other side, kind of equidistant, all the way at the base, and I'm going to make a second one. Then I'm going to look and see if they're even, and if they're not quite even, you can just kind of adjust it with the pliers just a little bit, just like that. 
Now you can see that this one's kind of narrow, narrower and this one is wider. So I'm just going to take my round nose pliers and just gently adjust it until I have the look and shape that I want. That's a lot better. Okay, now I'm going to form the rest of the top part by hand. Um, I don't need a tool to do it. The wire is so um, malleable. I'm just going to pull some wire out and then I'm going to use my thumb to kind of arc the wire. And I'm going to do it slowly and gently. And you can decide how big of an arc that you want. You can have it bigger or smaller. It's just whatever you want to end up with. Just like that. And now on the other side, I'm going to take my finger and I'm just going to let the wire kind of arc around until I get the shape that I want on this side, a mirroring shape. Now once I have my double infinity like this, I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and right at the juncture of that double infinity, I'm going to clamp it and then I'm going to make the wire go straight down, just like so. At this point, I'm going to cut the wire off the roll um, and I'll leave, I don't know, about eight or nine inches down. I'll probably do about nine inches. A little extra is so much better than not enough. Okay, so you have this great infinity with this line going down. Then I'm going to go ahead and thread on my beads and um, use your own color palette. And using the 20 gauge wire like this, the uh, crystals go on really easily. When you go up a gauge in wire, it could be a little more challenging. That's why I didn't make these out of 18 gauge. So now we've got all the crystals on there. I'm going to go ahead and take my chain nose pliers and I'm going to clamp at the bottom of the crystals. I'm going to leave about maybe a millimeter of room there. And I'm just going to make um, about a 90 degree bend, just like that. And I want it coming out at the angle where I'm going to start my bottom infinity. And then again, I'm going to just use my finger to arc the wire. There's one loop. And now I'm going to mirror and make my second loop. So now I've got my double infinity. I'm just going to take my flush cutters and with the flush side of the cutter against the piece I'm keeping, I'm going to just snip that off right at that juncture, just like that. And you might need to do just a little tweaking to make sure everything's on the plane that you want it to be. And there you have your name card holder. And the name card just slips between those two infinities. Very pretty. Okay, let's go ahead and create this great infinity napkin ring. I'm going to go ahead and take the napkin out there and we'll set it aside for an example. First, I'm going to use some 18 gauge pair of wire. You can use a different brand of wire you like or a different color. Okay, so I'm going to take about 12 inches of wire off the roll and snip it. Okay, so I've got about a 12 inch length of the 18 gauge pair of wire. I'm going to use these great round webbers. I use these a lot. This is a great tool. So I'm going to find about the center of the wire and then I'm going to position the webbers about an inch from the center. Then I'm going to push the wire around that larger barrel of the webbers. So I've made this teardrop shape. Then on the other side, about equal distance in the opposite direction here, 
I'm going to push the wire around the barrel of the Weber's. Okay. Now I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and right at the juncture on both tails, right where the infinity M centers, I'm going to make a bend so it goes right up the center just like that on both sides. And then I'm just going to pull it so we have a nice clean infinity. Then I'm just going to straighten the wire out a little bit. So this is 18 gauge wire so I'm only using um, six and eight millimeter crystals. The four millimeters that we used in the name card holder um, wouldn't fit. So we're using just a little larger crystal with this gauge of wire. I wanted to use a little heavier gauge of wire for the napkin ring holder so it would hold its shape. Okay, so we're putting on a couple of amethyst crystals a blue zircon, and five of the clear crystals on each side. So let's go ahead and thread those on. Okay, so once I have all of the crystals for one side threaded on, I'm going to go ahead and arc the wire into kind of the shape that I want it to be. And the reason that I arc the wire before I create this little spiral on the end is because the crystals will bend and take up just a little bit of extra space. So we want to make sure there's enough wire here to accommodate the crystals after it's bent. Okay. So to make this little spiral on the end, we don't need a whole lot of wire. It looks like I have just a little bit extra. I only want maybe um, an inch or so of wire, maybe an inch and an eighth. So I'm going to snip off just a little bit of that wire. So yeah, just about an inch and an eighth at the end. Then I'm going to take my round nose plier and I'm going to position it about a third of the way down the barrel and I'm going to make a small loop and I'm going with the plane of that um, infinity, okay? And once I get it about halfway around the barrel or so, I'm going to kind of gently arc the wire. And I'm going to start by using just the tip of those round nose pliers like that now, and just gently bring it around until it spirals enough to keep those crystals in place so they're not going anywhere. Then I'll take my chain nose pliers to just flatten that out so that makes the bottom of the napkin ring. Then we're going to just flip it around and do the exact same thing on the other side. Then in the opposite direction that we made this spiral, we're going to make another spiral on the same plane. bringing that around and I'll use my chain nose pliers to kind of flatten that out and then I'll bring it together a little bit and then I want to adjust the front so it looks just right. I'll adjust the crystals and then you end up with your really cute infinity napkin ring. just like that. So let's go ahead and create this custom butter knife. This is a finding um, that's ready to embellish that you can find here at Fire Mountain Gems and Beads. And it's really, really simple. So we've got these large whole bead elements. And here is my butter knife piece. I'm going to just unscrew it very simply. Remove the centerpiece, 
I'm going to use several of these glass donuts. Two amethyst and one clear celestial crystal large hole bead and just thread them in the order that I want them. Put the centerpiece back on for a little bling in the middle. One more glass donut. And then just screw it back together. It's that simple to have your custom butter knife. Okay, let's go ahead and make this really cute wine charm. You can see that I've embellished it with a custom L. I thought it would be really fun to have um, initials on there. You can make your own little um, custom charm or we have a bunch of different letter charms available for you to choose from at Fire Mountain. We've got this really great small memory wire that's just perfect for a wine charm. Little memory wire end balls, a couple of different crystals, some jump rings, and a charm. Okay, let's go ahead and cut the memory wire. Uh, you do have to use a special cutter for memory wire. There's a memory wire cutter that you can see here. And you can see the nose of it is fairly thick. So we have to open these um, rungs up a little bit in order to get the cutter in there. So I'm going to use a couple of toothpicks. So about two loops down the memory wire, we're going to open it up. And I'm just going to insert a toothpick in there to keep it open. And then I'm going to use a second toothpick, one rung down. And I'm going to kind of angle them in opposite directions. Everyone has a different way of doing this. This is just my little hack. And we want to cut the memory wire about a third of an inch in or so, a third to half of an inch in. So there's a little overlap. Okay, so this one, you kind of need the outside one open a little bit more, so I'll kind of angle that a little bit. And then you get in there with the cutter. Let's see. I'm actually going to use my fingernail to pry that open just a little bit more. It's just a little bit tricky, but once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. I'm going to snip it, pull out my cutter, pull out my toothpicks, and then I've got my memory wire ring for my wine charm. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is glue the little end balls on the memory wire. If you don't want to use the end balls, there is a special little tool where you can curl the ends of the memory wire to keep things from falling off of it. You can go either way. I just chose to use the end balls in this example. So the end balls, I am going to grab my chain nose pliers and pick them up. It's the easiest thing to do. I'm going to pick it up with the hole facing directly up. And so it's clamped in my plier with the hole up. That's really important, okay? I'm gonna put it in my non-dominant hand and keep lots of pressure on that plier. Make sure I can see the hole. Um, when I apply the glue, I'm gonna mix up some DevCon here in a second. When I apply the glue, I'm gonna use the end of a very small gauge wire. This is a 24 gauge wire to put the glue into the hole, okay? Let me set that down for just a second, and we'll mix up the DevCon. I'm using some DevCon 5-Minute Epoxy. It's one of my very favorite epoxies. You just squeeze out just a little bit from either side, from both sides, and then make sure and put the cap on right away. You want to keep that nice and clean. And then you just use a toothpick to mix up your epoxy. You don't need very much for these. And you just want to make sure that it's really well incorporated both parts together. So I'm going to mix it for, you know, 20 seconds or so. Now 
Usually when I'm applying the epoxy, I'll just use a toothpick, but actually the end of the toothpick is too large for these little balls. That's why the wire. So let's grab the ball, hole up, keeping lots of pressure on those pliers so it doesn't fall out. Grab the wire, just a little bit of glue. Don't need very much. If you get too much, it'll kind of get on the outside of the ball. And you're just going to apply the glue into that hole with the wire. You'll get a little bit on the outside. You can't help that. But you really kind of want to fill the inside. Just little bits at a time. It's really worth it to take your time on this bit of the project. Okay. So keeping lots of pressure there, I'm going to open up my memory wire. You can use a toothpick or your fingernail. And just put the end of the memory wire into the ball. And then there's a little trick here. You're going to release the pliers while you're pushing down on the ball, like that. And then you kind of just push with your finger and make sure the ball is all the way seated. And then you'll do the other side just the same way. All right, now that your memory wire um, with the ends have dried, we can add the charms. So we'll grab the letter charm and one of each of the crystals and several of the jump rings. OK, so when you're doing jump rings, you want to position them in your pliers with the opening of the jump ring upward, right near the tip of your plier, just like that. Then you're going to want to rock it out sideways. Add your component. Put it on the memory wire and then close it up. And you want to rock it back and forth a little bit to get a good connection. And then we'll do the same with the other two charms. And last one. And close up that jump ring nice and tight. And there you have your beautiful custom wine charm. Mm -hmm.